You've probably used Detected Easy signatures before, but have you ever wondered exactly how they work their magic? Detected Easy signatures are powerful, but sometimes it's helpful to know exactly how they match. In this video, I'll show you how to use Detected Easy's debugging features to step through signature matching and see how they work. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to receive more content like this. Want to take your support to the next level? Check out the membership options for exclusive behind the scenes content and special perks. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna just jump right into it here. Um, I've got a sample. Uh, here is the hash, just in case anyone wants to follow along. It is available on the Malware Bazaar. Um, this is a Go binary, as you can see with the signatures down in the lower left. And what I was particularly curious when I started looking at this initially, because I, I really haven't spent a lot of time with Go binaries, is how did it determine the actual version? Here you can see that Go, or that uh, Detected Easy is saying this is Go 1.19. Okay, well, this is a PE file, as you can see up above here with our file type output. Um, and in order to look at signatures, you can select the signatures button down below. And this will bring up another dialog uh, that contains all of the signatures. It's going to be organized on the left hand side by the underlying file format. So we have a PE file, we're going to look for our Go signature then, of course, in the PE file section. Um, and it doesn't always stand out immediately. Maybe there's a better way, there's likely a better way to get to the signatures that match. Uh, but just knowing that this is Go binary and these are the signatures that I was interested in, Go would be probably be the name of the file that contains those signatures. Now, selecting that file, you can see that there's, uh, there's quite a bit going on here. Um, we have a number of conditional checks. Uh, the first check is looking for if the .sim tab section is not present. And this .sim tab is a section that is typically present inside of Go binaries. We also then, and maybe a little bit more relevant to why I initially came in here, was um, trying to figure out how it determined the version. So we have this S version variable that's being assigned a string value. And you'll notice then as we move into this, this else branch, right? So saying uh, if, if it does not contain the SIM tab, then enter into here. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and we'll say that it is detected. This is a Go binary. Let's now do some code comparison. Let's look at, at the entry point of this binary, uh, this different sequence of bytes in order to determine a more precise version. So we have 1.7 to 1.9, 1.10, you can read the rest. Uh, now, this particular binary, if we go back to the original detection, is Go is reporting, I'm sorry, Detected Easy is reporting it as version 1.19. As we scroll through the different version values here, you'll see it doesn't really exist. There's sort of some catch-alls, a 1.1502 x.x.x, um, and then we end this if-else branch. Now, if you understand a little bit more about the Go builds themselves, uh, inside of the binaries, they do provide in more recent versions the string go build inf and as you might expect uh, this information is a way then via this string to identify version information and so now we have a check we're finding the string in the entire binary and then if that string is found then it's going to read some data based off of that string and see if it can't detect the actual Go version. So maybe this is the relevant location in which the version is getting extracted. So as you can see, I'm just trying to set the stage to say this can be a little bit complicated in order to know exactly what's going on. And sometimes it's just plain helpful to be able to step through a signature and actually see how it's matching and what's being detected. So the cool thing with Detected Easy is we can do just that. You can select debug up in the upper right hand corner here. And once you do that, this will bring up a new window. And you'll see that you're essentially now going to be able to step through the signature just like you would in a debugger. Up in the upper left hand, we have a number of typical debug commands. So we can continue or resume execution. We have step in, step over, step out. And that looks like run to cursor that I'm sure if we just hover over it, yep, sure enough, we get the tooltip and it says run to cursor. Um, you'll notice that down below here, this is the QT script debugger. So uh, we're not gonna do anything too fancy because I just wanna step through the signature, uh, but there is some command line options and some capabilities here if you wanna explore the help system. Uh, in order to get started then, we're just gonna simply step, I'm gonna use the step over instruction and uh, we'll start stepping through this signature. Now, you'll see that we're not going to match here 
because again, the, the, the binary that we are investigating does in fact have that section, which means now we're gonna enter this else branch. And here, we're just really stepping through all these else ifs until we get to either the else if that matches or, and here we go, um, or we got to the else branch. So here you can see else if is signature and section present and it just looked for that pattern and apparently that's what matched and the S version now is assigned the value 1.15.0 to x.xx.x. Now, we know from the output before we jumped into this debug session that that's not the version that was reported. So we can continue the step and we'll see now that this last check is being performed. And there we have the actual match as well as the extraction of a more precise version. So we'll step one more time here just so we can hover over S version and you'll see there is, in fact, the results. Um, we can also use the console and actually just type in the variable to get the value. So there you can see that uh, I typed in the variable named S version, and then there's the result. And if we let this finish now, we can just click resume, and we can minimize this window. Right there is the version result, go 1.19. So. Uh, that's in fact how it matched up. And uh, this was just meant to be, I think, a, a good example because there's a lot of conditionals here. So it may not be entirely clear when you first came in and, and tried to understand exactly what was the rule logic. This is a great way to understand exactly what that rule logic is because you're able to step through it. So hopefully that helps enhance your usage of Detected Easy, a great tool. And that's all I have for this video. So hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please leave those below as comments are open and I respond to those as often and as quickly as I can. All right, thanks for watching.